Just as America is anti-black, it is anti-fat. Fatness, just as blackness, is criminalized, penalized, objectified, and marginalized in our society. Over 200 years ago, a Belgian man named Adolphe Quetelet created what we now know as the Body Mass Index, or BMI. Quetelet was not a physician, nor did he study medicine in any capacity, but he still created the Body Mass Index, which is widely used in medicine today. To create the measurement, Quetelet studied cisgender white European men, documenting their weights and heights and then use those ratios to place people into categories, underweight, healthy weight, overweight, and obese. So someone who didn't practice medicine created a BMI framework over 200 years ago that our medical systems still use today and only using data points from the often thinner bodies of white people as the basis of that framework. This was not built with the wellness and livelihoods of black people and black bodies in mind. Of all the people considered overweight, the majority are black. Black people make up roughly 13% of the American population, but about 51% of America's fat population. Black people tend to receive less or worse healthcare than white people in this country, or no healthcare at all. And black women in particular struggle with doctors not taking their pain seriously and don't receive quality treatment as a result. Add in BMI prescribed obesity in the mix. And that just gives white doctors another reason to dismiss black wellness and perpetuate unequal treatment. In America, fatness is penalized by more than just our healthcare system. We live in a capitalist country that has to build and maintain the market and everything has its value on the market. So look at our magazines and our TV shows and notice the way fatness is valued or devalued. Then consider in an economy that is built on the desirability of goods, the desirability of workers and their ability to sell those goods, what is the value of fatness? This devaluing and stigmatizing of fatness is existentially threatening to hundreds of thousands of people. It's discriminatory and leaves fat folks and more often fat black folks pushed out of employment, which pushes them outside of housing and outside of healthcare. Dr. Sabrina Strings, one of the leading researchers working to address anti-fatness, traces the inequities stemming from anti-fat sentiments back to slavery. She says, the era of slavery was when white Americans determined that black Americans needed only the bare necessities, not enough to keep them optimally safe and healthy. And she traces that belief forward to today, when black people aren't as able to readily access healthy food, often work in less safe environments, and are less likely to receive proper medical treatment. Anti-fatness stems from anti-blackness. Some people choose to be fat. I think that is a major misconception by everyone on the left. People seem to have decided that fatness is only genetic or it's only a product of food deserts. But people can choose to be fat too, and they have that right. So we need to realize that there are going to be people who are fat, irrespective of what we do, because fatness is not something that needs to be solved or cured. It's an identity that people live with, that people will live with, that people have always lived with, that we've always embodied. And so for as long as the government and its government funded projects seek to cure fatness, instead of finding ways to make conditions better and safer for fat folks, we will witness oppressive, unfair, and unjust policies that threaten two thirds of Americans. How can we start addressing our anti-fat, anti-black systems? First, it's important that we understand health as a concept, as anti-black, as I discuss in my book, Belly of the Beast. Health should stop being the barometer by which we determine someone's worth or their needs. I would love to go to a doctor and have my concerns taken seriously because weight is not the doctor's focus. Second, we need people to start working to address the wider systemic issues for fat folks in our country. Access to healthcare, fair housing, addressing food deserts. These issues are killing people every day and it has to stop. And third, 49 out of 50 states do not have discrimination laws that protect fat folks. 
People can be fired from their jobs just for being fat. We need to protect people and their right to work. It really is all about finding ways to better advocate for the people around you, better advocate for fat folks in general, and assist fat folks in this fight towards fat liberation.